live stream of Diecast Emporium. Looks like there's already a couple people in the room, which is fantastic. So we're going to follow the basic template that we have before for any of these Diecast Emporium live streams. Basically, the theme of this live stream is going to be showing you my collection of 187 or HO scale big rigs, semi trucks, 18 wheelers, whatever you want to call them. And then as we go throughout this video, feel free to ask your questions or make comments via the chat section in the video, which you can find in the bottom left portion of your screen. Or if you're on your computer, it might be in the bottom right portion of your screen. Either way, it'll be pretty easy for you guys to find it. So again, as we go throughout, I'll pause several times and uh, make sure that I can address most of your questions directly. So right now, before we get going, I want to make sure we got a decent picture going. You guys can see everything. So it looks like uh, we got some adequate lighting and uh, looks like we're doing okay here. So it looks like we've got, so far, we've got J&T Clark in the room. We've got BC Diggerman in the room. We've got the YouTube dropout in the room. So hello, welcome all you guys. Uh, we've got Melissa in the room as well, Melissa Bender. So let's go ahead and get started. These are not in any particular order, so we're just going to go ahead uh, and start from the left-hand side. So, starting off, this is my basic low boy setup for my HO scale display. We have a Ford Aeromax, which is actually an old Matchbox Premier rig, which, man, I wish they still did those because those were some fantastic castings. You'll actually find a few Matchbox vehicles intertwined, whether they're trailers or tractors throughout this video. It's pulling a Norscott uh, Trail King low boy from back in the mid-2000s. Uh, and it's also pulling a factory-weathered Norscott Caterpillar 320DL excavator. Obviously, what is a die-cast Emporium video if there isn't a cat vehicle somewhere intertwined throughout? So uh, that is my low boy setup. Next, we're going to stick with the theme of Matchbox. Uh, this was part of the Matchbox Ultra collection, which actually believe it or not, was a step above the Matchbox Collector's line. Again, late 90s, early 2000s. This is a Mack CH600 tractor pulling a shell tanker trailer. Uh, part of the, I think this was the Highway Hauler series or the Highway Tanker series. Either way, fantastic casting, close to HO scale, still holds up well today. I have this parked outside my shell gas station, so it's obviously simulated filling up the gas pumps outside the Shell gas station. Very nice looking chrome tank. You have all your different logos throughout. Chrome bumper even has the antennas on the mirror. Very nicely done for a Matchbox vehicle. Again, I don't know about you guys. Some of you hopefully are my age or a little bit older and can remember when these were readily available, although they were expensive. We're talking over $20 each. In my opinion, they were well worth the price. And uh, with Matchbox getting into now their premium line within the past couple days, or I'm just not the past couple days, I should say, the past few years, I would love to see them bring back more premium vehicles. All right, we got a lot to get through, so I'm going to do these at a rapid pace. Next up, we have my logging truck which is by a company called Concor, another 187 scale model railroading company. This actually came with these logs, which obviously are not real, they're simulated. They made so many of these log trucks. This one in particular, I think, is an old Kenworth. Um, as far as the name on the door, it says C. Miller Incorporated Wood Transport, Portland, Oregon. So obviously your classic Pacific Northwest style logging truck. And obviously this is used outside my log mill. All right, checking the chat very briefly. The random blind guy has joined us. Hello, my friend. Looks like we have a few other people that have joined in as well. Jay says hi as well. Hello, Jay. Thanks for joining us. He says he's new. Well, thank you. Thanks for joining us for the live stream. Um, get your questions in or comments throughout. Again, those of you that may be new that are joining the live stream, 
I'm covering my entire collection of HO scale model semis. Uh, Demon Wolf 96 says hi as well. All right, let's keep going. We got a lot of trucks to get through. So as soon as I show these, I'll let it rotate a couple times and then we're going to move on. Here's a truck that if you guys have spent any time on throughways or interstate highways, you more than likely have seen. This is by Tonkin Replicas, which is now trucks and stuff. The GFS refrigerated trailer, uh, which stands for Gordon Food Service. They are out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, I like this truck because it has the Thermo King refrigeration unit at the, uh, the head portion of the trailer. These trucks and stuff, uh, vehicles, they make tons of these. I mean, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of these trucks that have been made over the years. And uh, they have, they're, they're very easy to find. Some of them, like some of the Love's Travel Stops trucks, some of the FedEx ground vehicles, they can, they can get pretty expensive and pretty elusive to find. But for the most part, if you know where to look, you can get pretty much any one you want. So that's the GFS truck. Next up, we have my Peterbilt tractor pulling a hot oils tanker. Another trucks and stuff model. Now, while we're on the topic, they have just released a pneumatic tanker as well as a propane tanker in multiple different liveries, and then a new run of gas tankers as well. Um, in notable liveries like, I think, Sunoco, a um, couple different other ones that are not immediately coming to mind, but I know that I plan on picking up one of the bulk uh, bulk trailers for sure. So I do not have a 2018 Cascadia, but I do have, I think it's a 2016 Cascadia. You're going to see that here in a minute. So, excellent question. Okay, another truck that you guys are likely to see if you're on the roads for longer than 30 seconds. This is a newer release. We have a Kenworth. I think this is a 680. Uh, pulling a Amazon Prime trailer. On the back it says, there's more to Prime, a truckload more. It says Amazon. I do like these newer style trailers because they have the you know aerodynamic addition on the uh, on the back or on the sides I should say. Um, Melissa asks, "When will you do an Army Monday?" I don't know when I'm going to be doing another Army Monday because, as I've said the first time you asked me, I don't have uh, any new Army models or military models that I'm going to be obtaining anytime soon. So. Appreciate you keeping me on my toes and asking me again, though. All right, let's keep going. So this truck is kind of, uh, I only picked this up for one reason, I should say, and that's because this is the moving company that brought me here to Cincinnati from New York. I don't even know, to be honest with you, if they're still around. I know I haven't seen their trucks in years. This is by Concor as well, Global Worldwide Moving. So this is the moving company that moved me to uh, Cincinnati, Ohio back in 1997, 98, somewhere in there. So I've been here for quite a while. And here it is. Um, one of the small details that I like on this truck that actually came like this, it's not an extra, are the mud flaps. Hope those are coming through on camera, but you can see the very realistic lady mud flaps on the back of the truck and we also have our not sure what the technical terminology is but i call it the bug guard up on top of the hood all right let's keep going next up we have another tonkin replicas trucks and stuff model i believe this is another kenworth i believe in the U.S. Express livery, so another modern-day trailer. While you guys are looking at that, let me get caught up on chat. Uh, let's see here. Looks like I missed a few questions here. BC Diggerman says, I have a suggestion for a 187 scale model excavator. Okay, let me know. Um, Alyssa asks, do you have a Taguchi flatbed truck? T 
Do you have a Taguchi with flatbed truck? No, I do not. Jay asks, do I play American Truck Simulator? No, I don't. I am not a big video gamer. Unfortunately, I just don't have time to get into video games. Most of my free time isn't really free time anymore because it's spent doing this. All right, next. We have a Kenworth, another trucks and stuff model. Getting to sound like a broken record. This one I like just basically because of the chrome. Another refrigerated trailer. This I like because it has the spread axle at the rear. And after this one, Jay, you will like because we are going to get into my Freightliner Cascadia, which I believe is a 2016 model, pulling a Possum Belly trailer. So aptly named because the trailer goes down like a Possum Belly. Also buy trucks and stuff. So while you guys are looking at that, I know there's been some questions coming in, so let me get caught up on that. Um... Random asks, what does HO scale stand for? HO really doesn't stand for anything. It just means um, that the models are in 187 scale, and it's a very common model railroading scale throughout the world. Um, Jay says, thank you for doing this. No problem. I enjoy interacting with you. Uh, Diggerman asks, it's a Viking 187 scale mini excavator. It's a European machine, but you can detail it up nice. Okay, I'll look into it. Thanks for the suggestion. And Jay appreciates bringing out the... Freightliner Cascadia. Yeah, I believe this is the... I'm checking here in front of me. I believe this is the only Freightliner that you're going to see today, anyway, in this video. But because it's detachable, obviously, I can use it to pull whatever trailer I want. Very nice-looking casting. I really like the metallic blue. It's pretty sharp. I hope it's coming across on camera, but it is a very sharp-looking truck. All right. Next up, we have a Matchbox Premier Rigs. This is a this is an old because I almost dropped the trailer clear on the floor. This is an old Kenworth Aerodyne from the mid '80s, pulling a trucks and stuff livestock trailer. So there you go. Again, a nice mix of what you can do with a quality Matchbox collector's piece when joined with a uh, suitable trailer. By the way, you guys are going to want to stay till the end of this video because I've got some awesome custom stuff to show you um, at the end of this video. I'm, sa I, I'm saving what I consider the best stuff for last, so make sure you stay all the way to the end. Okay. Um... All right, BC Diggerman, you should repaint it as a cat. I will send you the information. Okay. Jay says, my dad was in the military, and now he drives trucks for CFI. Very cool. Thank your dad for his service. Uh, random blind guy, what brand is the most durable that you can play with and the little pieces don't break off? Are you talking about of semi-trucks, you ask, or just models in general? I would say models in general, probably... I mean, every brand has durable, or it has breakable pieces. That's a fact of scale models. Um, I would say, overall, if you're looking for straight up durability and not necessary function and not necessarily functionality, probably some of the cheaper, older Ertl pieces are probably your better playing pieces. Uh, again, your functionality is going to be somewhat limited, and you're not going to be have the highest level of detail on those. But at least you know, they don't cost that much, um, and you're not investing a whole lot of money into it. So, I would recommend that. Okay, next up. We have a Athern, or Athern, depending on which way you say it. Um, I did lie, actually. This is an older Freightliner, a white Freightliner. So, I do have another Freightliner, but this is super old school. It's a cab over truck pulling a I think this is a grain trailer grain bottom dump trailer from uh, Promotex I, I thought that these looked really good together you know you have the the 70s style cab over truck with your custom exhaust 
you know, something that maybe a farmer would have had since the 70s and, you know, conjoined with a more modern grain trailer. I've seen a very similar setup to this, pretty local to me. So that's kind of what I was going for. Obviously, nowhere near the, the same paint job on the cab over truck, but similar in style with an older cab over from the 70s, obviously linked up with a grain trailer. So that's kind of what I was trying to mimic here. All right. Looks like a couple of you guys are really liking this truck. Um, yes, for semis, what brand would you suggest? Okay, so again, it comes down to what scale you want to model in. These are 187 scale, which is uh, HO scale. So Walther Seamaster is a good truck, which are these. But typically, they only make tractors. They make some trailers, but not a huge selection. Um, Promotex or Trucks and Stuff, which you've seen plenty of those in this video, or you've heard me say plenty of those in this video. Um, those are pretty well made. Those are pretty robust. I wouldn't recommend anything um, that's plastic, meaning, you know, high, that, that is, that's really soft plastic. So I'd stay away from brands like Wiking. I'd stay away from Wiking. I'd stay away from Herpa. But I'd say you're going to be pretty safe with trucks and stuff or Tonkin, Promotex, things like that. You should be okay with. All right. Here's one I think you guys are going to really, really like. This one I actually bought custom. This is an old Peterbilt with a custom car carrier trailer on this. Set this up to be carrying some classic vehicles to a classic car auction. really really like how this turned out i think it's carrying we've got four up top one two three so it's carrying seven right now it's probably capable of carrying eight ho scale cars in total so not too bad the top portion is functional so it can drop down to unload the cars which again i like a lot the trailer portion itself, again, is a um, is a kit. So the kit has to be assembled. The trailer does not come built like this. It's a built-up kit that needs to be assembled. All right. Onwards we go. Here is another kit. Both of these, the truck and the trailer, are a kit. By... Trident Miniatures, which is an Austrian company, I believe. So we have a Oshkosh Het heavy equipment transporter pulling an M1000 trailer. Uh, the tank is from Corgi, uh, Corgi, I believe. So it's close to HO scale, although nowhere on the box or the model does it stipulate what scale it is. But for all intents and purposes, it's close enough. Very, very difficult kit to build and assemble, at least for my skill level. I would not consider myself advanced at all, uh, especially when it comes to resin kits, which as of this year, I have just now gotten into. Um, also, the directions are less than stellar, so I would not recommend paying $100. It's probably over $100 now for the trailer and the truck because you have to buy the truck kit and then you have to buy the trailer kit, and when you're done, you're, you're looking at well over $100. So not a very easy kit at all for beginners. But when it's done, it makes a halfway decent-looking military transport truck. So that's that one. Back to chat for a moment. Uh, a couple guys have been saying thank you, and they're enjoying the video, so I appreciate that. Thank you guys for watching. BC says, Herpa stuff is fragile also. Uh, these models are not recommended for kids. I agree 100%. These are adult collectibles, as are most things that you are seeing on this channel. So bear that in mind, please. Okay. See how fragile that is? Case in point, grab rail for the door. It just popped off, but that's okay. We can fix that easily with some super glue. Couldn't have planned that if I tried. 
All right. Next up, we have a truck, an international Durastar, by Boley, with a container, trailer, and container by Athern. In the, I believe it's called, I believe it's pronounced Hagpal Lloyd. Sometimes I have to angle these to actually fit on the spinny table, just because of length. One of the best things about these trailers, and really HO scale in, in particular, is that if you wanted to model nothing else on your display or your railroad, there are tons of things for just having an intermodal container yard. There are container cranes, there are forklifts, there are trailers, there are containers, there are various trucks, there are uh, yard tractors, which are trucks that are used to transport the trailers and containers around. You could literally fill up an entire, probably 40-foot table with just a HO or 187 scale display of a working and very busy and sophisticated intermodal yard. Uh, that's something I've thought about doing, but quite honestly, I'm, my hands are involved in so many other things that uh, it's just it's not on the to-do table right now. But um, it's amazing what's out there. And you can do so much in HO scale. It's it's why it's called, and this is not my words, it's why it's called the world's greatest hobby. So that's the container trailer. By the way, this, I believe, is a 40-foot 40 th 40 container trailer. You can also get container trailers and containers in 53-foot and 20-foot lengths as well. Next up, we have a international... This is the older one, so I always screw up my numbers here. I believe the older ones were 4300s, weren't they? With the UPS freight livery and trailer. So there you go. UPS ground, UPS freight, call it what you want. Again, both models, including the trailer by Wather Scene Master, although you have to buy them separately. The trailers come in a two-pack. And obviously the trucks come in a blistered single pack. There also are two different UPS buildings in HO scale that you can make a scene or diorama with. There is a local UPS store uh, that you can put right in the middle of your town or city. And then there's also a large warehouse UPS hub that you can put in your industrial district. Again, if you want to see those, you can check out both of them on the HO files series on this channel. All right, let's get caught up on chat. All right. Um, do you like Kibri kits even if you can buy them assembled? I do like some Kibri kits. There are some, I have some in my collection. Um, a lot of the construction kits I have, but I'm not a, would I buy all of them? No, but there are some that I do have. Random blind guy, I'm an adult that loves to play with all my castings. I hear you, man. I, I totally get that. Um, how many toys do I have? I've had this question a million times, and the answer is I don't know the exact answer. There's too many to count. Um, Lewis has joined. He says today's is, I think he's trying to say today's his 29th birthday, so happy birthday, sir. I think his uh, text was broken there, but I think I got the gist of what he was trying to say. All right, uh, BC Diggerman, odd question, but what is the biggest vehicle you have ever driven? Biggest vehicle I have ever personally driven is a Buffalo Mine Protectant Ambush Vehicle. So the, the vehicle that the military uses to um, prospect is the word they use, um, IEDs and mines and that kind of stuff. I got to drive that around had a dealership once that was a lot of fun okay next this is one that i would say teeters on the word model the most but it scales out pretty close to everything else this is by a company called maisto you can find them almost anywhere they used to be a lot better than they are now but some of their castings still survive. Uh, this used to be a Ford tractor. It's now a generic tractor casting. But you can see it still resembles a little bit of that old Ford. And then it has a um, 
bottom dump trailer. No, I do not have a CDL. Uh, William says, happy birthday, Lewis. I agree. Happy birthday, Lewis. All right. Let's keep going. By the way, here's your opening parts for the bottom of the trailer. There you go. Sticking with dump trailers, here's a trailer by Promotex, which is your more conventional U.S. style dump trailer. Again, just paired with another Walther's International Durastar cab. 4900 cab. 43 or 4900 cab. Terminology at this point really doesn't matter. And yes, it is fully functional. You can lift up the the bed if you want, or the dump box, I should say, and dump out the stuff that I had in the back. Probably at some point should find a better place for this loose modeling material that I'm just storing in the back of this dump trailer before it gets lost. All right, you guys ready for some flatbeds? Here's your spread axle flatbed trailer. Once again, Promotex trailer, I believe. Promotex and trucks and, st trucks and stuff always confuse me. I think that's Promotex. And then the cab is by um, Promotex as well, and it's an International Pro Star. And then I just have two simulated bundles of wood on the trailer, which are also conveniently HO scale. All right. VC Diggerman asks, what is your favorite 187 scale straight? Oh, hold on. It's blocking the, there we go. What is your favorite 187 scale straight dump truck? Probably my Aethern Mac dump truck that I picked up earlier this year. You can find pictures of that on Instagram, but good question. Very good question. It's hard to find a decent 187 scale American straight dump truck because there's so many European style dumpers in HO scale, but there's very few modern HO, HO scale straight dump trucks that uh, have the correct dump box on it that's American issue that looks realistic. So that's up there. Um, the Diecast Master CT681 is up there. That has a pretty respectable looking dump box on it. Um, I'd say really between those two, that's that's it, honestly. It can be argued that the real working rigs dump truck is somewhat decent, but I don't like the dump box on it, and it's a little oversized. But what are you going to do? All right, we're getting down to it, guys. The last few... Got through this a little bit quicker than uh, I thought we were going to, so that's a very good thing. Start off with the tractor portion. This is another Matchbox Premier Rigs. This is the Kenworth T2000 from 1998. Check out that beauty. Don't mind me while I attempt to reattach the axles to the underside of this trailer. That pop off frequently. We've got a drop deck trailer, flatbed trailer from Promatex as well. Drop him into that. And just for laughs, I had an old NZG Cat uh, forklift for the load. Kind of because he fit perfectly on there. So, down to the last two. Now, these are customs that I have, well, as the name would imply, heavily customized. So hopefully you guys will appreciate it. Uh, William, make a two, make a two foot shipping display. Uh, BC Diggerman, hopefully Diecast Masters make some other one eighty seven scale dump trucks besides the CT sixty one. I don't think they have any plans right now to make any more dump trucks, but I do know, and I'm happy to report that they do have plans to make other 187 scale trucks. So I'm pretty excited about that and can't wait to see some of the transport series get tooled up in 187 scale. When we will see that, I don't know. Hopefully, 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 fingers, toes, everything else crossed. 
2022 for some of them, but I don't know. All right, let's start off with this custom. So the trailer is a Herpa beverage trailer that comes just in very plain white, and it comes with a, um, a boring, unrealistic rear tires and axle, which I've swapped out for a Walther's Scene Master International Axle that really brings it to light, gives it some more realistic look to it. And then I've created my own Miller Lite decals to give this a Miller Lite beverage truck look to it. Done the same here with this international tractor, single axle tractor. And when the two are together, make a pretty darn looking beverage truck. The only thing that this is missing that uh, I have not put on this yet because I placed an order, what was it, in May? And it still hasn't shipped from overseas. Is a little dolly on the front. So whenever that gets here, that will be added to this project. So that's my HO scale beverage truck. Uh, random guy says he's heading off to get some lunch. So thank you for joining us. Hope your lunch is delicious. And uh, when we're done, you can come watch the, or when you're done, rather, you can come watch the end of the video if you're interested. It will be going live as soon as we're done with the live stream. That's another thing that's cool about doing these live videos. So thanks again for watching. Uh, next question. Do you remember the weird 180, 148 scale major at Peterbilt dump trucks? With the yes, I do. I remember those. They were awful. Wasn't a fan of them. I think I had one in my collection, and I have since gotten rid of it. Okay. That's the beverage truck. Hope you guys liked it. I think it turned out pretty well. Again, the, the decals are actually sticker paper because I have not personally had much luck with water slide decals. I'm still trying to perfect that art. Um, so for placeholders, particularly when you do white on white, it doesn't look that bad when you use stickers. But obviously, it would look much better with water slide decals. But again, this is fine for right now as far as I'm concerned. And the last one. You guys ready for this? I think this is probably the most interesting so, for our truck, we have a Tonkin Replicas Peterbilt. I think this is a 367. Heavy hauler. And I got this from a guy on Facebook. Couldn't tell you who he was. I don't even know if he owns the right to this 3D print, but let's not delay anymore. So, it is a mobile rock crushing unit. That's on board with a dolly to form a trailer. So that's how this would be hauled from job site to job site or from the rock quarry to wherever it needs to go. Uh, next question. Will Diecast Masters make some semis next year? Um, I touched on that a little bit earlier in the video. I don't know if it's going to be next year, but they intend on making some of their transport series trucks in 187 scale. I don't know if they have anything tooled up for 164 scale yet. I know that's something that they want to do. But, again, there's so many other things in the pipeline and in the works that with the cost of tooling and everything else, uh, they got to get done what they've already announced first before they do much more things. So I'm sure that there are some ideas and things that they want to do in 164 scale, especially for the uh, play and collect line. But I do know for a fact that there will be some things in 187 scale coming, hopefully next year, if not next year, maybe the year afterwards. All right, so... You've seen it in a transport configuration, but when it's on the job site, let's get rid of the trailer. Let's get rid of the truck. Boom. Now you have a mobile screener or crusher unit set up and ready to go. This is something I picked up earlier this year. Really have not done a review video on it. I think I posted maybe one or two images on Instagram when I first got it, but certainly nothing elaborate. Wanted to save that for the last video, the last truck in this showcase if you will or in this live stream just because i think it's certainly the most unique something you don't see very often and uh when it's hooked up to a truck i think it's i think it just looks like the coolest heavy haul thing going down the road in my opinion really really looks good especially it's not based off of any crusher in particular but obviously the paint is certainly based off something you know atlas copco along those lines all right, guys, that concludes this video. Which of these was your favorite? Before we conclude the video, I will uh, answer any more questions that you guys have, and uh, then we'll sign off for this one. 
So go ahead and get your questions in within the next couple minutes, and then we'll sign off. So let me load chat back up here in a minute. Let me put a couple things on the display table for you guys to look at. Got a beverage truck back up here. All right. Get your questions in because we're going to end this video around 40 minutes or sooner, depending on how much more questions. Uh, yes, William, there are plenty of companies that make 187 scale loads. Walther Scene Master is a big one. Um, Athern also does. Um, I'm sure I'm missing some other ones. I don't know if you were for the video earlier, but this is a 187 scale load that was on my flatbed truck. Some bundles of um, sawmill wood that they even went as far as to paint the end of them orange that you would see in, you know, a lumber mill, that type of stuff. Uh, BC Diggerman, do you know when the 352 HD's Demolition x will come out? Well, they were supposed to be out already, and then they were delayed, and then they were delayed again, and then they were delayed again. But I think they will start appearing here in the U.S., by the end of this month or early next month. So the end of September, more than likely early October, hopefully somewhere within that time period. I, I know that they're on, they're definitely on a container. If they're not offloaded from that container, they will be very shortly. But again, a lot of this has to do with shipping issues, this, that, and the other thing. So I know you guys have been looking forward to them. I've been looking forward to them. But shouldn't be too much longer now. At least I hope not, because I know there's a lot of us that have been looking forward to seeing them. All right, any other questions before we end the video? Give it a couple more minutes. See if anything else pops up here. Really hope you guys have been enjoying these live streams. Let me know if you are, because typically this is something that's outside of my comfort zone. I don't really like doing these videos live. There's too many opportunities to screw up or make a mistake. But uh, it seems like you guys, for the most part, like them and are enjoying them. So if this continues, then we'll do a few more. Load up live chat here. All right, looks like that's it for now. So thank you guys again very much for watching. Really appreciate it. Be sure, if you have not already, to share the video, subscribe. All of that helps with the channel's growth and being discovered in the YouTube algorithm. So all that helps me out greatly. Appreciate it. Take care. Be safe. I'll see you in the next Diecast Emporium video.